NATO defence ministers have gathered in Brussels to discuss supporting Ukraine in its war against Russia and the overall security of the alliance. Today we will take forward the decisions taken at the Vilnius summit last July to further strengthen our deterrence and defence. With new plans, improved command and control, streamlined logistics and strengthened air and missile defence. We will address our defence industrial capacity. We are ramping up production of much needed weapons and ammunition for Ukraine's security and for ours. One topic hanging over the gathering is the issue of each country's monetary commitment. The issue follows comments by potential U.S. presidential candidate Donald Trump that once he, wa he warned that he once warned that he would allow Russia to do whatever it wants to NATO members that are not devoting 2% of GDP to defense. For more, Alex Cardia joins us. He is live for us from Brussels. Alex, these talks come on the heels of Donald Trump's recent comments on not coming to the aid of allies that don't pay their bills. How are NATO allies preparing for Donald Trump potentially becoming the, the Republican candidate and maybe even winning in November? Yeah, well, they're preparing in two ways. One is on politics, the other one is on policy. Let's look at the politics first. Uh, we've seen messages today uh, and statements today by Lloyd Austin, the U.S. Uh, Secretary of Defense, uh, saying that America's commitment to NATO's collective defense is ironclad. So on that political aspect, the, exi the current administration in the United States reassuring NATO allies that they remain committed to NATO. On the other hand, we've had responses from Jens Stoltenberg, the Secretary General of NATO, pushing back against the narrative put forward by Donald Trump uh, that NATO allies are not pay paying their fair share, announcing that 18 of them, a record, will be reaching that target of 2% uh, this year, including Germany, who hasn't reached that target since the Cold War. He's also said that uh, the EU defence is not an alternative uh, to NATO and that uh, the alliance should not pursue any path that divides Europe and North America. So that's the politics of it. On the policy side, they're ramping up that defence spending. They are uh, ramping up their plans to defend Europe should there be any attack uh, against the NATO alliance and clearly taking that uh, very, very seriously. Now, officials here say they were doing that anyways and that the reason behind that is Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the looming uh, Russian threat. But certainly politically, uh, as the election gets closer and closer, Donald Trump looms larger and larger here at NATO. It certainly does. Alex, thank you very much for that. Alex Cardia, live in Brussels.